Welcome to Pierce Stoff, the counter apologetics and philosophical segment by, with Jonathan M.S. Pierce for Skeptical Podcast. This week I want to talk to you about privilege, this idea, sociological concept that certain groups have advantages or disadvantages compared to other groups based on race, gender, age, sexual orientation, disability, social class, you name it, there is privilege in the world. Now I don't at all disagree with this notion. You know, I myself see myself as a feminist, as an egalitarian of sorts. So uh, I'm not one of these that has knee-jerk reactions against anyone that slags off men just because I'm a man. In fact, I'll fight for for feminism and, and other things in this way. But I am who I am, and therefore I will have biases. And, and social identity theory of in-group, out-group psychology means that people will favour and empathise and sympathise with people people that are more like them and they will dislike and and be biased against people who aren't like them so I'm a white male from the UK with a very privileged upbringing I had a good edu- education went to private school had a good education have been to university done several university qualifications and so I'm in this privileged uh, situation but I'm still someone that will will and does cast judgment on all sorts of things in the world as a philosopher I cast judgment on everything now there's this idea that oh and before I say that as a philosopher and as a critical thinker I like to think that I do mitigate many of my biases or all of them at least to some degree now it's very difficult to completely eradicate any kind of baggage from judgments um, from academia Okay, so the way I look at the world will be skewed to some degree by who I am and the upbringing and privilege I've had in that. But there is this issue that recently uh, I've made a few posts against Islam. Now, I'm not one of these Daily Mail, knee-jerk, someone that, that conflates Islam with being another race, and therefore it's some kind of extension of racism when I am being anti-Islamic. Uh, I critique Islam on the basis of its theology and philosophy, as I do with Christianity and any, any other worldview or religion that I get to know at least a little bit. So that is within that paradigm that I write against Islam, and I don't see it as being necessary to come from an Islamic heritage in order to do so. So the reason I say this is because some of my fellow liberals recently have been attacking me for being biased against Islam, maybe for some of my Facebook or blog posts being anti-Islamic in their in their outlook. Of course, they're counting the hits and ignoring the misses because I've been spending 10 years slagging off Christianity and republicanism and right-wing politics for a very long time, okay? So so this isn't suddenly, you know, I have this massive bias against Islam. I have an axe to grind with religion in general. Yes, there are other problems in the world, but I'm a philo- philosopher of religion, essentially. So that is where my expertise lies, and that's where my critical skills will be applied. Just because I don't go slagging off, I don't know, Marxist revolutionaries in Colombia, doesn't mean that they're not a problem, and doesn't mean that I couldn't critique them if I really wanted to, because I don't want to, because I don't have the skills to do that, and it's not my interest of where I've studied. So today I was sort of accused of not really having the right to slag off, or that's really a pejorative term, to to critique Islam on the basis that I am a a white middle-class male who's not Islamic. And this, this strikes me as really weird that, that you have to have some kind of experiential knowledge of Islam in order to critique it. Uh, that works both ways. Surely to, to say it's all right, you have to have some kind of experiential knowledge of it. You know, w- which way does that cut? So if I want to cast opinion on old people or the treatment of old people, geriatric health issues, do I have to be old in order to do that? If I want to cast 
a critical eye over the Epic of Gilgamesh and the religions of Mesopotamia and Sumeria and whatnot. Do I actually have to be from there? Do I have to have, to have been of that mythological religion uh, in order to do so? I, it's ridiculous. To me, Islam and Christianity are worldviews. They are not races. They are not genders. They are not things over which I would have no control. These are worldviews which are chosen by their adherents. Being chosen worldviews, they are open to rational critique. There is no need to be of a particular race, gender, ethnicity, whatever you want to describe that, that demographic, any demographic. There's no need to be a Muslim or to be a Christian. These are ideas. We're in a marketplace of ideas, and as such, I'm a human being with ideas and with the ability to critique ideas. Therefore, I am very well qualified, at least in, in theory, to be able to critique Islam and Christianity, for example. The question may remain as how knowledgeable theologically I am about Islam, and am I justified in passing the criticism that I do? That's another question entirely, but in, in theory, there should be nothing which inhibits my criticism of any religion of the world being a worldview. Now, if we look at something like, for example, black feminism, I agree that there is some experiential paradigm to that, whereby I wouldn't know what it feels like to be an oppressed black woman. And therefore, there is an element, I could, I could certainly look at the more rational and theoretical models of such an idea, but, but there is a, a, certainly a sense of privilege from a white male perspective that, that would mean that I wouldn't be able to adequately feel what it was like to be an oppressed black female in the 1960s, for example, 50s and 60s, or at any time, obviously. So I, I do agree that there are certain areas whereby who I am will dictate how well I would be able to enter into discussion and critique or represent such a field or set of ideas. But certainly within the realm of religion, I think I'm entitled enough to be able to cast an opinion, and I don't need to be a Muslim in order to be able to critique Islam. The holy book being written in the first millennium by Muhammad as a direct dictation of the words of God, for example, these, these are claims which are well within the realm of, of critique by anyone with the rational capability to do so. And for me to make claim on who properly represents Islam, you know, by looking at the role model of Muhammad, by looking at the Quran and what it d dictates and, and that one should do and how one should be, then I think as an objective outsider, I'm still able to make claim as to what I think would be properly be a Muslim, uh, holding to the fundamental tenets of the religion, because they are not dependent on who I am. Those are simple claims of language, of history, of theology, and of philosophy. And I feel more than able to take part in that discussion. So really, it just uh, sounds a bit like a rant, but it's a bit annoying. There, there are issues with privilege in the world, and there are issues with, for example, the feminist field of philosophy and and politics and sociology at the moment is is really interesting so there's often a lot of fight back especially on the internet you see from men uh, particularly but also some some women that that I know fight back against these ideas of specifically the radical kind of feminist but but even your your both standard types of feminism fight back against that as if it's threatening to them because they are of a particular mold or particular demographic so obviously men can feel threatened by women seeking equality uh, and in this kind of in group out group psych psychological dimension they they will react accordingly and cast a a critical eye over feminism, which is biased by the position that they find themselves in. This kind of maybe a position of privilege of being brought up as a as a man in a patriarchal society, which favours men to some degree. So I I get that and I and I agree with that. But I do do disagree that that can be applied to religion, to philosophy, and and the fact that I do spend an awful lot of times having a go at Islam doesn't mean that I'm Islamophobic. 
irrationally. I mean, I have written before that I'm rationally Islamophobic, which is kind of an oxymoron anyway, because phobias are irrational by nature. But what I'm saying is, out of all the religions of the world, Islam is the biggest worry at the moment, and that seems to be empirically the case, and I can't see that anyone would argue rationally against that. Christianity is a problem as well, as are all religions, in my opinion, and I argue that on basis not of knee-jerk psychological reaction because I'm an atheist, but I've actually arrived at atheism rationally, and I'm applying those rational tools to the religions uh, because that's what I, I know well to do. So just thought that would be something a little bit different and interesting, possibly for the pools to get stuck into. As ever, question everything, including your own socio-demographic privilege and biases. I'm Jonathan M.S. Pierce. Drop by my blog at A Tippling Philosopher.